Hey, 42 here. There's something timeless and romantic about living on the ragged edge of civilization. Whether you prefer the American Old West, the final frontier of space, or somewhere in between, the thought of living in roguish freedom is certainly appealing to many. If you are hoping to find somewhere free from the shackles of law in our world today, here are some places you might want to investigate. On the border between Afghanistan and Pakistan sits an area known as ungoverned Afghanistan. And it is just that, ungoverned, at least to some extent. More officially known as the federally administered tribal areas, it provides a great opportunity to experience all the dangers and thrills of the Old West in the modern era. Whilst officially under the jurisdiction of Pakistan's federal government, the areas are considered semi-autonomous, which means that they are bound more by tribal laws than the frontier crimes regulations that Pakistan has put over them. Basically, the law of the land is whatever the local tribes and warlords make it out of it. When the Supreme Court of Pakistan refuses to deal with the region, you just know it's a dodgy area. Seven tribal districts, also known as agencies, divide the land with six frontier regions. Though they are represented in the Parliament of Pakistan by elected representatives, the tribal districts have no problem with rejecting parliamentary resolutions that they don't approve of. Surprisingly, support for the Pakistani military is high amongst the tribes, with nearly 80% approving of an eventual military government. For now, the federally administered tribal areas remain a hotbed of militant activity, thanks in no small part to the lack of control which Pakistan wields over the region. If you fancy rubbing soldiers with outlaws, brigands and warlords, then be sure to book the next available flight. If, however, sand dunes and open spaces are more to your liking, then you're going to love the Western Sahara. It has the honour of being one of the most sparsely populated territories in the world, with around two people per square kilometre, based on best estimates. With all that space, it's simply a daunting prospect for any one government to control it, the Western Sahara region was considered a Spanish colony until the late 20th century, after which Morocco and Mauritania fought with the native Sahari people for the right to the land. Mauritania soon gave up, leaving Morocco to claim the most valuable portions, whilst the Sahari people were left with vast tracts of barren desert. Despite Morocco's tenuous grasp on the region, the United Nations refuses to recognise their claim. Instead, they considered the Western Sahara to be a non-self-governing territory. Due to the question of whether Spain had adequately decolonised the area when they cut ties and left. For now, if you're interested in herding camels with the Sahari people and hiding among the dunes, it seems no one knows what laws actually apply to the area or how to enforce them. Best to take advantage of the situation whilst it lasts. If you were to commit a crime out there, the locals wouldn't even know who to report you to. Never mind prosecution. With the region's lack of laws mainly attributed to political negligence and a general mindset of, wow, this area is so large and unpopulated, who actually gives one? I imagine you could probably get away with quite a lot in this vast expanse of barren desert. If living the pirate's life on the high seas appeals to you, grab yourself a boat and head out to international waters. Territorial waters for any nation only extends 22 kilometers out from the shore. You aren't truly free until you move through the Contiguous Zone, which sounds like a really cool science fiction movie, but it's not. It's an area which extends another 22 kilometers beyond territorial waters for any country. And even then, if you're caught engaging in egregious acts of piracy, any nation has the ability to bring you to justice. But there's a whole lot of water out there. Unless you attract an awful lot of attention to yourself, you're just another speck on the horizon. There is something magical about the high seas. Since the very first ships, the idea of sailing the open ocean has inspired generations of artists spawning beautiful paintings, books, and even movies. To apply laws to such an unruly stretch of water would almost be an insult to what is one of Earth's last true remaining wildernesses. International waters are regulated out of necessity in our modern world, but enforcing the rules is an impossible task for the world's governments. Thus, the world's oceans remain one of the last truly lawless places on Earth. As the great Hugo Grotius said in the early 17th century, people from all nations have a right to the waterways of the world. He called this right mare liberum, Latin for the free sea. 
and his book by the same name laid the groundwork for the concept of international waters as we know them today. So set sail for the high seas and celebrate the freedom Grotius championed centuries past. In January of 1991, Somalia suddenly found its central government dissolved as it plunged into a bloody civil war that still rages on to this day. In the two decades that followed, anarchy ruled the day as warlords fought amongst themselves for the opportunity to rule small sections of this fragmented country. There have since been several attempts to re-establish order in the region, starting with the short-lived transitional national government in 2000, and most recently with the Federal Government of Somalia in 2012. Only time will tell whether the latter is effective. Though the formation of a parliament and election of an official president does lend some momentum to the effort. Meanwhile, the region remains fractured. The concept of government is only half the battle in a world of militants and local rule, where might makes right when it comes to the law. And in the internet age, it's hard to gain credibility when there are multiple web pages all claiming to represent your fledgling government. Piracy is a major problem in Somalia. With basically no laws or enforcement agencies to keep a lid on things, pirates rule the high seas around the country, making the waters surrounding Somalia one of the most dangerous shipping routes in the world. In 1923, the British government decided to grant New Zealand their own little piece of the ice-encrusted Antarctic wasteland. They established the Ross Dependency, New Zealand's own little cheese-shaped triangle of Antarctica, which included a swath of the continent and also extended out into the sea to cover a small archipelago known as the Balleny Islands. To date, New Zealand hasn't quite figured out what to do with them. There has been no attempt thus far to establish a colony on the islands, Though still technically under the governance of New Zealand, if there is a bright centre to civilization, then the Balleny Islands are certainly far from it. Though the Antarctica Act of 1960 established a precedent for prosecuting criminal acts in the Ross Dependency, it doesn't seem anyone is actually willing to make the trip out there to actually enforce the law. The closest anyone in New Zealand has actually come to acknowledging the Balleny Islands' existence was a proposal to establish them as a marine preserve in May of 1999. That's pretty much the equivalent of saying, well, we can't quite figure out what to do with them. Uh, perhaps we should just leave them to the penguins and fish. Even within the United States, there are certain places that escape the roving eye of the law. Located in an arid expanse of the Sonoran Desert in Southern California, Slab City is one such place, where people go when they really want to get away from it all. Officially, the site is owned by the state of California, though it is small and desolate enough to avoid close scrutiny by the government. Built on the remnants of an old military barracks, Slab City is named for the large concrete slabs left behind after the barracks was demolished. Most of the residents live in RVs, campers and tents, amidst shanty structures that serve as meeting places for music and community gatherings. Though they purchase most of their supplies from a nearby town, the Slabbers pride themselves on their self-sufficiency, choosing to go without many modern luxuries in exchange for the freedom that Slab City offers. Called the last free place on earth by its inhabitants, the population of mostly hippies and plain old weirdos fluctuates with the seasons, from the 150 or so permanent residents to nearly 2,000 people during peak months. Some are attracted to the weather, others the isolation. But all enjoy the rare opportunity to experience a lifestyle free from the burden of regulation and rules. Free at least until the state of California demands the land back. Last but certainly not least is Pitcairn Island in the Southern Pacific Ocean. With a population of only 48 people as of a July 2014 estimate, it is the smallest national jurisdiction in the world by population. On an island of only 47 square kilometers, that means there isn't much room to spread your legs, so you better hope you don't make any enemies whilst you're there. Pitcairn Island and the unpopulated islands around it are claimed as a British overseas territory by the United Kingdom, because we all know how much the UK just loves to stick flags into things and say it's theirs. Though the residents of Pitcairn Island bend their knee to the Crown Ruler, they've been allowed to establish a local parliament to handle matters on the island via representative democracy. Essentially, the islanders are left alone to craft their own laws and self-govern, as long as the Queen can peek over their shoulder now and then. 
Despite Britain's claim to Pitcairn Island and its surrounds, the United Nations still considers the area to be a non-self-governing territory. With so few people involved in the democratic process, it must be difficult to cast votes objectively. Vote for the wrong person and you just might have your dinner burned that night. Thanks for the view, subscribe for more 4C2.